If you clicked on this video to comment that I'm absolutely crazy calling these iPads a disappointment, just hold on one second. Now, if you aren't paying close enough attention, then you're probably not gonna see how there are some things that don't quite add up. Over the years, I've gotten on that release day train and oogled the newest Apple product with my rose-colored glasses. But the honeymoon was over a long time ago. Now I look for any inconsistencies in Apple's repetitive messages. So let me tell you a quick story about my buddy. He was using a 2022 iPad Pro, and for some reason he decided to upgrade to the M4 after I told him I picked one up. I want to touch him. FOMO? Long story short, he felt like the screen looked a little better and it was overall a bit snappier. Now the ultimate test was he didn't tell his business colleagues that he picked one up. They noticed his picture looked better, plus the movement of that camera to the landscape spot gave his eye perspective a little bit more of a natural look. Now I didn't feel like at first this was worth the upgrade, but with his feedback, Maybe I wasn't giving this iPad a fair shake. That brings me to the deep rabbit hole that I fell down. When Final Cut Pro for the iPad came out, I thought it could be something I could use until I realized it was extremely limited. From the lack of organization to not being able to edit from an external drive, I just couldn't use it. Now, I was hoping that Apple would add an external function in a firmware update. More likely, they would do a money-making grab for a hardware upgrade. Sure enough, when the new iPads were announced, this was added to the hardware, sort of. After a morning of trying and several phone calls with my same friend, we found out that Final Cut Pro for the iPad didn't get this update yet. This is kind of stupid. But could this mean the other iPads that are using Final Cut will get this function as well? Hmm. If so, shame on you Apple for releasing Final Cut Pro for the iPad last year. Essentially forcing people to upgrade to a larger storage only to add the function later. You blew it! If not, Still shame on you, Apple, for even releasing the Final Cut Pro for the iPad last year. Such a money grab in my opinion. Lame. Lame, yes. That brings me to the main point of this video, the M4 chip configuration. When Apple decided to put these silicone chips in the iPads, I got excited, along with many other people, at the possibility of a Mac OS hybrid coming soon. I mean, think about it. Desktop class processing power on an oversized iPhone. <laughs> Kinda. Coupled with the fact that Apple skipped the M3 chip altogether and went directly to the M4. Whew. To be completely honest with you guys, the M1 and M2 that were in the iPads were already super powerful. So what gives? Well, the first issue was my buddy did complain that the iPad really didn't seem any faster when he was exporting his Final Cut project compared to his laptop. Now, I went looking at the M4 specs and I realized something. The 256 and 512 models only had eight gigs of RAM while the one and two terabyte models have 16 gigs of RAM. Now, at first I was like, whoa, I discovered something. But not, no, no, I just, I, I didn't pay attention because I quickly learned this is nothing new. You sir are a moron. Ever since Apple added their silicone chips to the iPad Pros, the two largest sizes always got the 16 gigs of memory while the two lowest didn't, but, they did something else that they haven't done on any other iPad before. They're using binned M4 chips for the 256 and 512 gig storage. In layman's terms, the 256 and 512 models only have nine core CPU with three performance cores and the six efficiency cores. While the one and two terabyte models have the full 10 core CPU with four performance cores and the six efficiency cores. On paper, this might not look like much and it might not make a huge difference, but overall, it, it might end up doing that. Now, personally, I never found the need for iPad Pros. I do feel like people that have it just like that larger display. 
I feel the bigger ick in all of this is the fact that iPad Pros don't all have 16 gigs of RAM. Not to mention that in 2024, they're still using eight gigs of RAM in the laptops and desktops. Can we move on from that already? Now, beyond the internal specs, Apple also created a solution for a problem that didn't exist. They made the iPad Pro even thinner. Now, originally the iPad Pro, which was released nine years ago, was 6.9 millimeters thick. The sixth gen iPad Pro from 2022 was just 6.4 millimeters thick. And of course, if you saw the event, this new M4 model is 5.1 millimeters thick. Okay, it's definitely noticeable. That's what she said. <laughs> oh, by the way, this doesn't include the camera hump, which makes it larger than the other iPad at six point something. I, I can't remember. They just act like it's not there. Side note, the iPad Air, this new one, is 6.1 millimeters thick. Um, is it really the Air if it's bigger and heavier than the iPad Pro? Apple logic. <laughs> now, here's my tinfoil hat theory. Thanks. There were rumors of even a bigger iPad coming in at 16 inches. What if the reason for thinning down the devices is to set them up for a foldable version? Hmm. What do you think? Am I completely off base here? Do you have your idea? Or is this just an obsession from Apple to be thinner? Not including the camera humps. <laughs> Go ahead and leave your comments down below. Of course, I can't talk about the iPad Pro thickness with mentioning something Apple didn't mention in their keynote. The battery size got smaller. Of course, it's only by 500 milliamps, but once again, we didn't ask for this. Oh my God, no! Now, I'm pretty sure most people aren't gonna notice it, that the battery life on the iPads is absolutely awesome. But for those who will notice it and do, Sorry about your damn luck. But hey, it's thinner. You can bend it easier. Funko, don't bend your iPads, please. Oh, and uh, let's have a moment of silence for people who had the pencil and the magic keyboard for their past iPad Pro, thinking they'd be able to use it on their new iPad Pros. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Hey, what's another 349 bucks for a new keyboard? And another $129 for a pencil that's now thicker than the iPad. Now, I'm not saying this iPad isn't a nice little improvement from the previous years. I'm suggesting that if you wanna upgrade from an iPad that might be way older than what recently came out, last year's isn't a bad choice and you save a little money. The problem is, all the choices you now have to weigh when you're buying a brand new iPad Pro. Now the iPad Pros aren't cheap once you start putting more things on them. Now if you want more power, you just might wanna look at the laptops while you're at it. You'll be surprised that you might find a better deal there. Of course, I, I get the appeal of the iPad. I'm not discounting that fact. What really bothers me with these iPads that are supposed to be the Pro line now it seems like they're taking the Pro line and it's breaking up into even further segments with this change in the Apple silicone chips. This is, this is ridiculous at, at this point. Now, I know I haven't mentioned the iPad Air update. I did get one and I'm working on that and it's coming soon. Finally! Also, I think you're seeing this on Friday, June uh, 7th. Uh, WWDC is next week and is set up to have some really cool updates to the OS. I don't know about any other rumors, I, I haven't been paying attention, so. In the meantime, why don't you go ahead and check out this video right here that YouTube thinks you would like. You guys have a good one and I'll see you in the next video.